it's time. It's finally time for the review that I've been waiting to do for months. Hi everyone. Today we're reviewing Will of the People by Muse. There is a whole lot I have to say about this album, so let's crack on, shall we? The album starts off with the title track, and after hearing it as a single, and now in the context of the album, I think it's one of my least favorites. I mean, it's still a good song, and the ending of the song almost sounds like the small print, as in the heaviness of the guitars. But still, compared to all the other songs on the album, it's one of my least favorites. Moving on from there, we have Compliance, and I have some issues with that song. And that's mainly the compression on Matt's voice. I mean, that's just way too much. And his voice is, is so in your face and I don't really like that. I mean, some people may like that, but I have said before that I just don't like when Matt is in your face and in your ears as much as he is on Compliance and also on a later track in the set list, Ghosts. But other than that, the rhythm of this song is very good. It's another pop song that Muse has been known to do like two or three every album and I think it's their best pop song to date. Then we have Liberation and Liberation is heavily inspired by Queen as you can probably hear from the vocal inflections, the harmonies. That's nothing really out of the extraordinary for Muse. They've been doing that for years and people have been comparing him to Queen also for lots of years. But this one is the most heavily inspired by Queen I would say. Also, I forgot to mention that the lyrics on this album are just so mediocre and so obvious. It's really mad at his worst at some points. I mean, it's almost cringe inducing. The words he uses like asunder and, and you make me feel like it's Halloween, he says shackled. I think he just says that because it sounds weird and it sounds like a word that they haven't said before so I think that's why Matthew says that but it doesn't complement the song in any way and I just think it's very unnecessary. Let me move on to Won't Stand Down and Won't Stand Down was the first single released from this album and a lot of fans loved it for being heavier but a lot of fans also hated it because of the massive Imagine Dragons vibes that they got from this. And having listened to this in the context of the album it's a good song, I mean, the heavy part is still heavy and it rocks, but the verses are just too much Imagine Dragons-esque and also, again, the compression on Matt's voice is just not that great. Then we have Ghosts or How Can I Move On, which is an acoustic track, only the piano and Matt Bellamy are in this, and it kind of reminds me of Matthew's cover of Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel. Only this one has a slightly better production, but it's still all in all a very mellow song from Muse, which is necessary for this album because we've only had bangers up until this point. So we had to slow this down with Ghosts and I get that. I mean, it's not a bad song, but it's nothing really I want to be listening for for another year. Then we have the track You Make Me Feel Like It's Halloween, which was the last single released just before the album release. And it tries to be creepy and spooky, especially with the vocal effects they put on this voice, on Matt's voice. And if that's what they're trying to achieve, I mean, that's not really that good. I mean, the synths and the bass are just amazing and the drums are good, but the little vocal inflections on Matt's voice, especially on the chorus, just listen to this. I have to do it via my mobile phone, but listen to this. That just doesn't sound that great. Also, another tiny point I have is that on Liberation, for instance, the vocal harmonies with the high vocals and the lower vocals are not that great as they used to be from Matt. I mean, he's old, so he can't go as high as he used to, but they put an effect on his voice that makes his voice higher. And that's not really... That just sounds weird and different compared to like Black Holes and Revelations where he could do that still. But back to the track we were talking about. You make me feel like it's Halloween. The guitar work on this track is just amazing. There is some shredding from Matt here. And I've never heard Matt shred before. So that's something new. And a tiny little easter egg is that his wife is also in this song. And she sings the sentence, I'm your number one fan. You really have to listen for it to find it. Then we move on to Kill or Be Killed. And 
all my viewers that watch me regularly know that I didn't review that as a song in separate and that's mostly because I wanted to do it as an album review and all I can say about this track is god damn old school muse if I ever heard it this is just the heaviest the best this is one of the best songs on the entire album and this just reminds me of Stockholm Syndrome Black Holes Revelations era I mean this is Core Muse. Nothing really else to say about that. Then we move on to Verona, which is another soft track. And I don't know if it's me personally, but the soft tracks on this album are just not that great. Like any other Muse album, I don't feel the mellower tracks that much. But that's just me because I like really heavy bumping riffs and just an all in all heavier songs. But I mean, I can listen to this. I don't find it annoying. It's it's okay. But the lyrics again are just a little bit cringeworthy. I have nothing really else to say about this song other than that. Then we have the track Euphoria, which sounds like if Get Up and Fight and Revolt had a baby, and I'm all for it. The guitar work on this track is again excellent, amazing. Again, some almost shreddy solos, and just an amazing high note from Matt, which you heard in the intro. And I'm shocked that he can still do this at this age in the studio version. I mean, in the studio version. He has multiple takes and he can retry. I believe that he hits a higher note here than in the track Get Up and Fight, which was his highest note in that album of Simulation Theory. I'll compare it now. Listen to this. And all in all, it's just another pop rock track, but the best one they have released to date. This is, this screams old school muse, but it also screams new muse. So. That's a perfect arrangement. And then the closer on this album, We Are Fucking Fucked. That's just, that's one of the weirdest tracks Muse has ever written, in terms of lyrics that is, because Matt said that it almost sounds like a weird B-side from the Absolution era or something. And I can get into that. I mean, listen to this. That's just amazing. That's really old school B-side muse. The only thing I don't like about this track is the ending. Not in the musical way, but in the lyrical way. It's just, hey, 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 fuck off, hey, 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 stockpile. I mean, that's so cringeworthy. I mean, if you thought the lyrics up until this point were cringe, listen to the last couple sentences of this song and you'll be convinced otherwise. I mean, I had to review this album in two separate ways for me personally, because the Muse fan in me likes all the songs, but the Anthony Fantano in me doesn't like it as much. So if I was a Muse fan just reviewing this and not a music critic, I would give this album a 9 out of 10 and it would be one of my top albums by Muse. But because I genuinely don't feel like that, because I do think there are some things wrong with this album, I feel like this album needs a 7 out of 10. So I hope you all enjoyed this review and I hope you don't hate me in the comments for my comments here. Please like, share and subscribe and then I'll see you all very soon in the next video.